Um, all right, so we've got the equation for the latent heat effusion, and we've got a nice scenario here where we got this mystery substance that's 0.55 kilograms, and we're going to pour in 9.56 joules of energy, 56 times 10 to the power of 4 joules of energy into the substance without changing its temperature, just changing its state, which is actually kind of hard to do in practice, but theoretically we could discuss it, okay? Yeah, man, who's going to divide it? The energy that we pour into this thing is going to be 9.56 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. And somebody with a calculator who's already there, maybe you can help me out. What do you get? Uh, Ooh la la, 173,818. Does anybody else check with that? Yeah. Yeah? Do we all agree? Oh, 0 0.1818? Okay, yeah. probably 0 0.18 repeated or something? Probably. Okay. So, joules per kilogram. Yeah, and then sig figs. So it's going to be approximately equal to, we start off with two sig figs here, right? So I would probably do it in scientific notation, just to be clear. 1.7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, times 10 to the power of 5 joules per kilogram. And then what somebody was saying earlier about these units, because we usually do leave it in joules per kilogram, but joules is kilogram meter squared per second squared. So divided by kilograms, so the proposal was that we could write the, the uh, units for this latent heat effusion constant as joules per kilogram, or who was it that proposed we could write it as meter squared per second squared? Oh yeah, all right. So totally right. I don't know anybody that does it, but totally right. Okay, totally, totally uh, works out that way. But this is a little bit more expressive in terms of what we're trying to say. That for every kilogram of stuff, it takes this many joules to melt it. Okay.